Okay, let's, give, let's go ahead and give the Lord a hand, please. Um, today, today, first weekend, uh, we have uh, Brother Michael, who is husband of Deacon Kim. Uh, I'll give you, uh, as we preach on the second half. I'll testify on behalf of Deacon Kim of what she, uh, how she persevered. And, you know, today, Michael's a changed person. When he came here on Friday, I, I, I already sensed the different spirit in him. You know, last night, uh, actually Friday and Saturday, he came uh, to participate in our services. And last night, he received the gift of tongue and gift of holy dance. And, and he had an encounter, a spiritual encounter with God, a supernatural encounter. And, you know, only a month ago, he didn't really even believe in that. But God touched his heart, and I'm going to uh, go a little bit over that on the second half. Amen? Um, when it comes to um, being healed, when it comes to being delivered, and you want, you want restoration, you want your prayers answered, you want uh, your families restored. You know, many of us, we all have uh, uh, issues and we all want, uh, we petition to God for prayers to be answered, right? And even when you want things answered from God, there's an order to things. And you have to understand the order. Because if you don't know the order, you're just going to be uh, doing a lot of things in vain, right? And so uh, we, we come to Jesus, who is the author of our salvation, right? We come to Jesus, who's the healer. He's not only the healer. He's also bringing, the, you know, as a healer, he's bringing the healing, right? He's uh, the restorer, the counselor. He's, the, he's, he's peace. He's love. He's joy. He's all the goodness, right, of God. And he's coming. And he came to us in the flesh. And, and he came and he healed people. He spoke with authority. He delivered people. He brought freedom. He said, I come to set the captives free. You are the captives. We were the captives, right? Some of us are still in captivity, actually. You're in a spiritual captivity. And so when he came to his people, Israel, you are now a spiritual Israel. And he's coming to you now. As he came to them, and it's still the same. He's still coming to you as he came to them. And as you're waiting for your Messiah in that sense, because they were waiting for their Messiah, right? Messiah means deliverer, helper, rescuer. They're waiting because they're in uh, oppression. They're in physical oppression by a, another nation. And they were hoping that they were praying, they were waiting for Messiah to come and deliver them, establish his kingdom. And, and for the New Testament saints, this is no different. We're, we have problems, right? Some of you have problems, family problems, money problems, health problems. And you're praying and you're waiting for your personal encounter with, with our Savior to come set you free. Right? To, to bring healing. Uh, uh, to restore. But when the Lord came to Israel, they, they didn't get exactly what they were expecting. He did come to set them free. But it wasn't on a level that they could understand. They just wanted the freedom of the Romans out. And they, and they assumed that if that occurred, that if the Lord Jesus just get rid of the Romans, everything would be fine. But the Lord didn't come in that manner. 
He didn't come and he didn't kick out the Romans. In fact, he said, you respect Caesar. You give on to Caesar what belongs to him, he says. And so they, they didn't like that. And they decided to kill him because of that. Because they didn't get what they wanted from God. You see, you got to think of your, your own lives. If God doesn't give you what you want based on what you think is right, you can actually end up becoming his enemy. And so he said, I did come to set you free though. And he said to his own people, you don't even know why you're in this position the first place. Because you have to know why you're in this position the first place in order to get your freedom. They didn't want to know why. They just wanted out. Many Christians are like this. We just want out. Right? We want out of our difficult situation. Not realizing why we are in the difficult situation. This message continues to resonate to the generations. It is the same message. We all go through the same problems, right? From different generation to the next generation. And then the parents carry <clears throat> those problems to their children. And the children face the same problems to the next generation. We can be as children. I'm never going to be like dad. I'm never going to be like mom who are like that. And then what happens? They end up just like them. It's not only a physical gene. If you have a physical sickness, the physical gene doesn't just pass on and then you have a hereditary disease because your parents had it. You have a spiritual gene that gets passed on and that spiritual gene are the curses and the demons. You pass on to that to your children. Or you could pass on the blessings. So whatever you're experiencing in life, you're going to pass on to your gen next generation. So we're all waiting for a Messiah, right? In that sense, an encounter with God to set us free. Or if we're, if we're beyond that, we're, we're waiting for our next encounter with God to experience Him on a higher level of presence. So before the healer comes, before restoration comes for many of those people who experience Jesus physically at, at that time, before all the goodness comes, the word comes, before the word of authority comes, what comes prior to him? There's always an order. The message before the mess Messiah comes, the message to the church, the message to God's people, repent. And God sends John the Baptist, right, to set the path straight. Spiritually today, God is sending of His voice through His servants. And it is the same to the church. Repent. Set your hearts straight. Prepare your hearts for the Messiah, for the Lord Jesus, so you, that you can have an encounter with Him. And that repentance will set up the stage for your healing, for your deliverance, for your restoration. Because it is our sin that has got us into a lot of our bad positions and our oppression. Our poverty, our curses, it's your sin. And so the message continues, repent. And so on a spiritual level... When God sends people to our church, what, what is the first order? See, they may want to come in and they want, hey, my family's messed up. Can you, need, can you pray for me? My, my, I'm, I'm sick. Can you pray for me? I'm in debt. Can you pray for me? But as, as most of you know, when, when they come like that, we, we, there's an order, right? It's like, a, it's like if you go to a hospital, hey, heal me. Well, I can't, we, the doctor just doesn't give you generic medicines. Here, just take the medicine. This, this is a, uh, I can heal all kind of pill. It doesn't matter what you're doing or how you're living or how you're eating. Right? Doctor doesn't do that. Doctor needs to diagnose first. Doctor needs to do some tests 
just to to get to the source of the illness and so spiritually that's what we do we start asking questions right we we want to know your background or, or maybe they they need to confess something to us and so as we get to know their background right and and if you go to the doctor and you're and you're too proud or you're too ashamed right if you're too ashamed you're too proud you're too ashamed because doctor needs to look at your body right no 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 i don't want to show you my body i'm not going to take my clothes off doctor can't assess you you may have to even undress completely which represents you need to humble yourself right in the spiritual realm you need to undress and humble yourself and let the doctor examine you. You need to let the God's servant examine you spiritually. Which means you need to tell all. If you hold back, you're not going to get the right medicine. You, you might not even get the healing anymore. You might just get a treatment, a bandage, a temporary. It's just, it's just going to be a little relief, right? But you're still going to have that problem. John says, I am a voice. I'm only a voice. He doesn't even acknowledge, hey, I'm a prophet of God. Like so many people like to boast, I'm a prophet. John said, I'm nothing. I'm just a voice. I'm the voice of God to set the path straight. The, the path is your heart. The word comes so that you may repent because our hearts are crooked, crooked, and it needs to be set straight. The John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah. The Old Testament saints are expecting actually physical Elijah. And those who only know the surface of the word, they're expecting physical Elijah. But the Lord said Elijah did come. He came as John the Baptist. The spirit of Elijah has come. The spirit of Elijah, what is he doing? He's setting the hearts of the sons back to the Father. Right? Physically, yes, that's happening too. Restoration of family members. But the setting the hearts of his spiritual children back to Father God. And if you receive God's message to repent then you're going to have your encounter with Jesus. You're going to have your encounter of healing, restoration, blessings, and prosperity. If you humble yourself. If you repent. Some might say, well, what do I got to repent, Pastor? I, I'm, not, I'm not doing anything wrong. God's not looking at what you're doing on the outside because because on the outside you might not be doing anything that's really severely wrong but he's talking about your heart you he might be saying you're not following me wholeheartedly you might not have forgiven somebody you you see in the old testament the sin is if you if you're committing the act you're in sin the New Testament era is, if you're committing the sin in your heart, you're in sin now. See, the Old Testament saying said, I'm not committing that physical sin, so I'm righteous. They're defining like that. And in the New Testament era, it doesn't matter whether you're doing that on the outside. It's matter what you're doing on the inside that really counts. Because we all can go around and say, I'm not doing what they're doing. A lot of us have the spirit of Pharisee, self-righteousness. I'm not doing what they're doing. But what are, what's, what are you doing in your own heart? You lust. He, God says you have sinned. You, you covet. You hate. Now the word hate. If you don't love like God loves, and you're hating. It's not that, oh, I hate you. You give back less. 
now you're hating. And God said, you're a murderer. He said, you need to be circumcised in your heart, not your, not your outside. Because you see, everybody can do the outside, right? But, but not everybody can do the inside. There is an order to everything. You can't just come and want God, something from God. He wants something from you. He wants your heart. You know how easy it is? For God to give us a house? You know how easy it is for God to give us a car, a nice car? You know how easy it is for God to give us money when you're poor? You know how easy it is to restore your family for God? This is easy for God. What He wants from you is your heart. And he's, he's, he's not giving us these things because He wants a pure heart first. Can you handle if I give you all that? But do you want God or do you want those things first? Whatever's not working in your life, you got you to gotta, you gotta think, maybe I need to repent in that area. Maybe it's you and not them. Maybe if you got, you got relational problems with family members, maybe the problem is you and not them. Especially if you have received higher revelation through this church. It's you. You need to humble yourself. Maybe you need to go say, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter who's right or wrong. Maybe you need to just go say, I'm sorry to restore the relationship. Maybe you need to repent so that Lord Jesus can come in the midst of both of you. Right? Maybe it's us who's preventing God. Maybe it's us who's preventing having an encounter with Him. Why don't you continue to examine yourselves, not the other person. And today we're going to talk about Mark 12 here, on thir verse 30. And you shall love the Lord your God out of and with your whole heart, and out, and out of and with all your soul, and out of and with all your mind. With your faculty of thought and your moral understanding, and out of and with all your strength. This is the first and principal commandment, the greatest commandment that we have. God says it's to love Him, right? With all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Second commandment love your neighbors, right? as you love yourself. Are we doing this? Are you really loving God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind? Is all your thought held captive to the obedience of our Lord Jesus or is your thought wandering in sin? Daydreaming, nonsense, angry at someone, offended at someone. That's not held captive to our Lord Jesus. That's held captive to carnal thinking, to the enemy. Your strength, what does that mean? Does that mean I got I to gotta flex my muscles to say, oh Lord, I love you. What does this really mean? See, if you don't know, the Bible says that if you sin without knowing, you're still guilty. The Lord Jesus went to the cross for that. But it doesn't mean you stay ignorant. It doesn't mean that when the Bible is at your desk, you don't read it. 
you got to, you know, Lord has forgiven you. Now do right. Get right. Learn. Stop sinning. Don't just, even in man's law, ignorance is no excuse for the law. You break the law here, you're going to jail. It doesn't matter that you didn't know. I didn't know you passed a new law. Doesn't matter. Law must be enforced. God's law is the same. And that's why we need to go deeper. We need to show God we are loving Him as we go deeper with Him to know everything about Him. Because He says, if you love me, it's not how a matter of how you shout to me. It's not a matter of how emotional you can say, I love you, God. He said, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commands. And if you don't know the word, how are you going to keep his commands? Because if you don't know the word, you don't know Jesus because he says, I am the word. And so in order to know him, you need to know the word. Amen? And then if you want to get a deeper relationship, you got to get deeper with the word. Between the lines. You can know the surface of an ocean. It looks beautiful. You look on a beach. The beach is beautiful. But you don't know how much more beautiful is beneath the ocean. All the life down there, right? All the creatures, all the plant life, all, all that is a million times more beautiful than the surface. And that's how the Word is like. The Word on the surface is very beautiful, but you can go much deeper. And that's your choice. Or you can fear to go deep. But the command is, deep calls on deep. That's in Psalms, right? Deep calls on deep. The deepness of God's heart is calling us to go deeper with Him. But if you reject that, He also said it works the other way around. If you want to disobey, your disobedience will go deeper. There's only two choices with God, life or death. There is no middle ground. You need to strive to enter the narrow road. You can't, you, you can't be a neutral bystander. I'm saved. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm going to keep myself safe. And I'm just going to wait my time out to make it to heaven. doesn't work that way. Default, you are an enemy or a rebel to God if you don't obey. By default, there's two, two choices, that's it. You either choose to go on the road of life, or by default, you're on the wrong road. Automatically. If you had to fight gravity to stay alive, you, you spend a lot of energy to, to stay in the air, fighting gravity to stay alive. You stop, you fall automatically. Gravity taking you. Right? Gravity takes you, whether you like it or not. You got to sustain that energy. And God requires your choice. And when you choose, God comes with His strength. He, but He needs to see that you're choosing Him. When you're exhausted with all your strength, all your heart, and you're at your physical limitation in loving Him, that's when he's going to meet you right there at that intersection. With his strength, his heart, his spirit. And he's going to carry you through now. But he wants you to exhaust all your strength as he had Abraham exhaust all his physical strength before he gave him Isaac. He wants to know that you're going to choose with all your being. That you're going to choose Him. He wants to know that you really love Him with all your heart and all your being to the point of total physical exhaustion or limitation. That you're going to fight for God. That you, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're telling Him, I love you no matter what, God. If I die, I will die. I'm going to die chasing you, God. I'm going to die seeking you, God. And He wants you to die. Die on the cross for him, right? Die to yourselves first. Because you're not going to be able to die physically if you can't even die on the cross. 
you won't be able to, you'll deny him if that day comes. If, they, if someone comes to persecute you and say, you either choose our way, deny Christ and choose our way or die. Most Christians will deny Christ. You cannot even deny yourself now in your own flesh. How are you gonna how are you gonna die physically when death is in your face? Unless you're dead to yourself, you're gonna be scared because you haven't experienced the perfect love of God. Because when you have the perfect love of God, there is no fear. And when someone takes your life, you'll be like Stephen. You'll have God's heart. Forgive them, God. You won't be screaming for your life. You'll be like, forgive them, God. They don't know what they're doing. Don't count this against them, God. That's the love of God. Doesn't matter if they're terrorists or, or atheists or whoever's coming in the future. If you, if you have a heart like God, you'll say the words of Stephen. Forgive them, God. They don't know what they're doing. Don't hold this against them. Use this situation to turn them to you. I'll give my life. Can you give your life now while you're alive to one another, to turn others around your family, your friends, your co-workers to Christ? That you don't act so carnal, so soulish, so disobedient to God. But you choose. I, shall, I choose to die now, Lord, to myself. Amen? All right, let's give the Lord a hand. We'll start worship. Let's go ahead and bring the worship team up.